Hi, everyone. Welcome to Emily Leadership Podcast, where we talk about a variety of interesting topics: career, relationships, well-being, and personal growth. Today, I have a certified health coach, Jenny Lan, in the house. Hi, Jenny. Thank you so much for joining me today. Thank you. Thank you for having me. So maybe we can start with the definition of health coaching, and if you don't mind sharing your insights with our audience. Um, so I'm actually a national board certified health and wellness coach. If you really want to get technical, it's a lot of letters after my name. <laughs>、um, it's actually relatively new、uh, board certification through the National Board of Medical Examiners. So it's a real deal.、Um, went through a lot of、uh, training for it. So I actually. Um, the, they, what they teach is much more beyond than、um, standard coaching. If you ever, if, you know, know a health coach, you look for those those letters after the name. So, health coaching is I, I get that a lot. A lot of people ask like, what is health coaching? Because there's a lot of roles out there that actually in businesses that use the term health coaching. So I like to actually explain it to people in a way that they can understand. Um, so there's kind of two ways, and I've said this before. So if you can imagine yourself; you've been to the doctor's office, and they say you have to lose weight, you have to lower your cholesterol, you need to lower your blood pressure, and then they hand you this sheet and they say you need to do this, this, and this, and you walk out and you're going, "Okay, how do I start? Like, where do I go? How do I do this? You know,、Why? I know I need to make these changes." And the key part of that is the person needs to be ready to make the changes, like start doing something. So imagine a coach is the person waiting for you in the waiting room, and they see the sheet of paper and they see what the doctor said, and they're like, "They put your arm." I put my arm around the shoulder and say, "Okay, how do you want to do this? How can I help you? How can I support you as you, you know, go through this?" And the other analogy I've always used with people is health coaches,、um, or as I coach and how we've been trained, is not to tell people what to do. It's the person that's going to make the li- lifelong change needs to one be ready, but also know where they want to go, and so they're always in the driver's seat. So I always say, I'm in the passenger seat. You're driving. I'm holding the map, and you know where the destination is. There's about fifty different ways we could get there. Let's figure out together how you want to get there, and I will help guide you, support you. Inspire you. Ask the tough questions like, "Do you want a bumpy road? Do you want a smooth road?" <laughs> Those kind of things. That's what a coach does. But it's allowing the the person to make lifelong changes is really it's they themselves being told what to do or given plans that are, you know, pre made isn't going to necessarily make a lifelong change. So I really want, and everybody's life is different. Their lifestyle, their environment, their history. Um, their health needs are all different, so you have to be able to adapt to what the person's、um, real life is like and make it work. You know, help help them figure out what works for them, not me dictating what works for them.、Um, but it's that person that's by your side, that's dependable. When you're struggling, you can reach out. That type of、uh, that's really what a health coach is. It's kind of that smart friend, but that advocate, and that's honestly the person that. Ask the tough questions, you know, to the answers that have been swirling in your head.、Um, and I know we'll talk more about other things later, but、um, the biggest part is, you know, being able to break that habit of、um, why the person hasn't made the changes or is afraid to, and things like that. Those those types of questions will come up, and and actually, what does is people have those aha moments. As they're going through coaching, like, okay, you cracked a nut. Now I see what I was doing, and I'm really ready to make another change. It's actually quite fun. It's holding your clients accountable and making sure that they're sticking with the plans. And but then you are not in the driver's seat. You're there to support and being a cheerleader. So when you're sitting down with them and going through the plan or the roadmap, if you will. How do you usually hold them accountable and making sure that we are headed to the right direction? So, what is your approach around that? It's a good question, and it's funny because it always comes down to the individual person. So, I've had clients where they're they're ready, but they're super nervous and they're scared, and they just want super baby steps. 
like really small baby steps. They don't live off of just numbers other, you know, sometimes they will a little bit like as far as their weight or lowering blood pressure, things like that. So it really comes down to the individual's um, needs. There's some that are like, let's check my weight every, let's talk, every time we have a session, let's talk about my weight, my blood pressure and blood sugar levels. And we, and it, they're all about the numbers and that's okay too. And some of, some of them really want me to hold them accountable and be tough on them. And I let the client dictate what that looks like. And honestly, I have a little bit of a empath spidey sense that Nat, I've always had, but it comes in handy with coaching, but I can tell when I, if it's got just based on mannerisms or the conversation uh, as far as how far to go. And I will ask more questions. If I sense that, I ask the client more questions because you never want to push somebody beyond what they're really comfortable in doing because that ends up making them step back two steps and makes it makes it's too much. Um, but there's some that are just I've had a client that has major health concerns like you need to make changes now. And that's when they're ready to just go give me and I usually keep so in a session you have at the end of the session, you work together, say, okay, what are the three things up to three? Sometimes it's just one, but up to three things you're going to work on between now and the next session. And they're very specific. Um, and sometimes those things aren't to be completed in like, oh, now they're a habit in two weeks. You know, it's there. They can be repeated session after session. Some of them will be, and some of them won't work. They're like, this doesn't work for my lifestyle. This doesn't, you know, can we tweak this one? This is what I found out. You know, I thought it would work, but it doesn't. You know, how, can we discuss how we can tweak that? So that it really does come down to the individual and how much they want to be held accountable. But that is a big part of my job is to do that. That's why they hire me. But also there's a side where it's that trusted, loyal person in, in their life too. They need to have somebody that can help guide them because it's when you have to make some serious changes or you're and you're ready to do it, it's overwhelming. I mean, you've done it too, where yeah. you're like, where do I start? How do I get there? So that's really what the coach does. And like I said, I, I adapt it to the, the client's needs and emotions and lifestyle. That's amazing. Wow. Um, I can wait to learn a little bit more. I know I have a couple more questions that I can dive in deeper with you on that. But um, let's talk about the book that you introduced to me a while back, Effortless Healing by yeah. Joseph Mercola. I had my epiphany because for the longest time, I did not prioritize my health slash well-being in my life. I literally just like every single day, right? Career, like how to make more money, right? That was my priority for so long. And when I started the soul searching journey, I was like, whoa, this is a little bit different than what I had experienced in the past. And I know this is important because without my health, I cannot achieve any of my dreams, right? So I'm really grateful that you introduced the book to me. But anyway, I'm really interested in learning from your perspective, like what have you learned from the book? What are some of the key takeaways that you want to share with my audience? Dr. Mercola has been around a long time. And actually, fun fact, he was one of my instructors when I was going to the Institute for Integrative Nutrition. That's actually how I figured out who he was. And he taught one of the classes and um, he is just a wealth of knowledge. His story is actually really fascinating to become an MD and do that for a long time. And then he himself learning the nutrition side and the holistic health side to then literally pivot on a dime and create his own um, his own practice centered around holistic health. I was just like, wow, you know, that that's a big deal to see doctors, you know, medical doctors to do that. Um, but he saw the need and it was important to him. Um, but the book, I the book itself was one of those at the very, like you at the very beginning of when you're making those changes, I can still remember I was walk, I was downstairs walking on my treadmill. I had, I was listening. I'm a, I'm a mom of two boys. And back then they were toddlers. So they were super busy. So I don't have time to really read. I always multitask. So I was walking and listening to the audio book on the treadmill. And I can still remember listening to the, the chapter where he's talking about water. And I was just like, Oh my gosh, mind blown. Like 
had no idea. And the book is just, what's so cool about it, it's practical. Like there's just small practical things you can do, but yet there's so much good information that you don't, you can't get in such a cohesive source like that. Um, and it, it's one of those that will always be my reference guide. And he became one of my reference guides, you know, getting information from him from videos or his site or anything like that. Um, but it's one of those that also opened my eyes up to things I didn't learn yet, like epigenetics, like how you can actually, you know, impact your gene code based on how you, you can turn on and off your genes based on your lifestyle, your diet, all of that. It's just that was like, wow, that's so cool. And that's a new science that's out there that is getting more and more traction. And that made me feel good because there's so many, you know, things that, that in my head, I was like, oh, I preconditioned to have depression and high cholesterol, and high blood pressure. You know, in your head, you're like, it's because my family has it. My mom has it. My dad has it. And then I heard that. I'm like, oh, well, wait, I don't have to turn those on. I can actually have control and turn them off like so that they don't activate those. And I was like, that is the coolest. That was one of them. And then other things like really learning about what vitamin D and sun exposure really is. And when is it, when's it good? How, you know, and anything in excess is not good. Um, how to safely protect your skin and sun exposure, especially if you're going to be out there for more than 20 minutes. Um, and then, yeah, other things like intermittent fasting and HIIT workouts, the power of a HIIT workout, uh, H-I-I-T, for people that don't know what that is, uh, high intensity interval training is what it is, which I love. I, I do those myself. Um, but there was, it's just, it was one of those where like some of it, I'm like, yeah, I get that. I understand. And then other times it was just like, wow. But the, the cool thing is no matter if it was mind blowing or not, it was practical. You could take a tiny piece of whatever that was and implement it. You know what I mean? It was just, and that's really what I love about coaching too. It's like, you can take like a subject on water alone and you can boil it down to whatever that individual, you know, where they want to start and you can just build from there. And that's kind of how I felt like the book was designed too. Mm -hmm. Kind of lay out the baby steps yeah. and, you know, with common sense advice. That's why yeah, it's so easier for me to digest because like I said, right, I uh, I have no background. And I before the soul searching journey, I was not interested in anything about health and well-being. So, yeah, I'm like a baby learning how to <laughs> crawl and how to walk, that type of thing. So, yeah, which really amazing to be able to understand what he's talking about in the book. Right. <laughs> right. That's how I was, too. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Jenny. And yeah, let's talk about your company, Libra Health Coaching. I think it's definitely a great tool, a great strategy for people to like dive in a little bit to kind of like how to bring my health like back on track and how to leverage the resources that you have provided to your community. So maybe a little bit background, if you don't mind, like how the company was born and like what do you see in the next five to 10 years in this space? Good question. Uh, first of all, Libra Health Coaching. Uh, it's funny you use the word "born" because I, I was I've reflected back on the last oh, how has it been? Almost eight years, something like that. Um, and I reflected back to on the company, and I almost wonder was Libra my oops child being born? Because <laughs> you know, like the unexpected. Because I didn't expect it. I mean, I was a hundred. You, I mean, you know me too. I, 100% business, corporate world, go, 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 working god awful hours. And I just thought I would work in corporate America for the, my, for the rest of my life. So when I also had my epiphany, like, oh my gosh, and it was a tough one, which people could read on my website. Um, I had the scary moment, like, you need to change or you're not going to make it kind of like, you need to seriously rethink what you're doing. And that's when I... I didn't, I didn't expect Libra to even come come into fruition, but um, what ended up happening, I started ch making changes. I actually hired a health coach myself early on, believe it or not. Um, and then I started learning from her. Where did you go to school? I was really fascinated. I just, it was weird. It kind of, I had this like click in me where I was like, this is fascinating stuff. Like I, it sparked like this passion and like spark was in me right after that and so it led me down this path and as i was about to finish 
um, my initial schooling and be certified, I was like, I really want to create a business around this. I want to reach the masses. I want to use my natural and uh, innate empathy and hu- I'm very human focused. You know, I love connecting with people. I love learning stories of everybody's individual journeys. And I'm like, can I actually put that into a business and support people and do, you know, I did it by myself for most of it, other than a handful of friends that really got it and some family members. Um, but I don't want people to have to go alone. They don't have to. Um, and so I decided to create Libra at the same time when I was working in corporate America. So I had it as a side hustle up until just this last September where I resigned from corporate America. And, um, and, and crazy enough, because I'm an overachiever, I actually created an employee wellness group, too, at the company I was working with. That was an unpaid position. But I thought, well, if I'm here and I have this skill set and a passion, I can bring it to work. And I created an employee wellness group, but but that, you know, offered things like workshops and lunch and learns and speakers would be brought in. I worked with high executives to store employees at all level. Um, It was so fun. It was super fun. And I was able to bring kind of the other side of Jenny to work, too. And I learned a ton over that time. But at the same time, I was doing three things at the same time. It was nuts. Um, On top of the fact I was mother of two children, um, you know, caring for my elderly parents, it was nuts. So, um, but then I, so I always had Libra kind of there as that side hustle, but it was, I took advantage of being in corporate America and having that employee wellness group to learn and hear from a large audience. By the time I left, it was a thousand members in the group. And so I had, could actually hear and listen to what would, the needs were. And I resonated with those people because I worked with them and I lived similar life, you know, the constant grind, go to work, hurry, 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 right? Um, so I took that knowledge and I also brought it into Libra. And during that time, I was also doing pri- more private coaching than anything as my side because that was a lot more controllable. And I can condense the time to the, you know, the private clients. So I was doing that. Um, Libra itself, the name where it came from, honestly, was like a spark of inspiration or God was telling me because it was all of a sudden one day it just clicked. And I, I'm a Libra, October 19th. So for people out there that, you know, know the zodiac signs and read their horoscope, <laughs> it clicked because the sign for Libra is the scales. So finding balance and everybody, Mm. any, you know, father, mother, human out there wants to find more balance in their life. And I was like, that's it. It's Libra health coaching. And it worked. I got the website. It was pretty fun. Um, And so that's kind of where it all came from. And over the time I've been, was trying to do three things. I got smarter and more specific to what I wanted to offer for my own company. So when I made the change from having three things to just one, um, now I'm very much more focused and I learned a ton over that time. Um, And I really want Lever to be a heart-centered company that truly cares about the clients, even if it's, you know, the business to business side or the individual, it's really, I really want it to be out there to help make an impact um, on people's lives. When you were juggling three plus more jobs at the same time, how did you overcome and how did you stick with your goals and your dreams when you were going through that transition? As far as the transition from to the point I was leaving? Yeah. Yeah. Like, yeah. It's uh well, early on, I'll start with that because kind of early on, it was like, what am I doing? And I've always been, anyone that's ever worked with me knows I'm an overachiever. I'm super anal about how I do stuff. <laughs> I just am. It's just how I always am. Um, I work really hard. I put a lot into whatever I do. Um, and I and I believe and hope it shows. But as I, over the years, as I was kind of... I really wanted to leave and do my own thing for a long time, but it wasn't the right time. So what I ended up doing, it was an absolute blessing though. You know, I have so many longtime friends from where I worked before too, but it gave me time to figure out when I made the change, 
I would know I was ready and I would be prepared mentally, financially, all of that. Um, what I got some really good advice um, from a couple. So uh, Lisa Nichols, if anyone's ever watched her, you should watch her, find her on YouTube. Um, she is amazing. But one thing I, when I was reading one of her books, she said, as you're, she's like, don't leave your day job until you'll know when you're ready and you have to financially be ready. So that's one tip, save, 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 save mm -hmm. for yourself. But also she said, your current employer is your first investor into your company. And it clicked. I was like, I'm taking the money from my employer that I'm making right now and reinvesting it back into myself, into my own company. And I'm like, that's so cool. <laughs> it's so such an epiphany like thing. I'm like, oh, that's so, so it didn't feel like, it didn't feel draining or exhaust. You know what I mean? That gave it some life and gave it some excitement to when I was going to make that transition. Um, so that was one thing. And, it, and honestly, it mentally, I had to mentally prepare myself. I was, I was doing so many things at once. Um, one thing I would give anyone in some advice is when you're doing those multiple things, and I'm talking to myself because I did it myself, but um, give yourself grace and space. Grace because you're doing so much and it's not going to be perfect and you're going to feel tired. But then when you do feel tired, give yourself the space to take a break, like a real break. Because if you push, 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 I found myself, I lost my spark a couple times where I'm like, because I just overdid it. And you don't want to lose that spark. Um, you have full control. And that's, you know, you do have control, even though at those times you don't always feel like you do. Um, but you have to be kind to yourself. And especially when you, I'm realizing that now as I'm going in 100%, I have to, I catch myself when I'm, it's that gremlin in your head that gets to you, right? That says those things. And you're like, oh, stop. Put the masking tape over the gremlin's mouth. Like, shh, be quiet. And I'm, I'm glad I took that time leading into this to hear the gremlin, recognize it. And so that when, when it was time, I knew where my boundaries were, you know, so that I could actually give myself space and give myself be okay with taking the time because you can't give and you can't give a thirsty person water if your cup's empty, you know, so you have to be able to keep yourself in a good aligned place. Um, even when you're really cranking it out and doing your, your multiple job, but also, especially when you're going to do your own business, you, there has to be a, a once again, a balance in there. <laughs> um, so that's my, that's my tips. And like I said, financially save like crazy. I used to actually have an account where I had $5, $5 in going in every week. And that adds up over the years really quick. Uh, it sounds silly, but even that little adds up. And in my head, after I heard Lisa Nichols say that, I was like, that's money towards Libra. That's to my future. And it was exciting and it felt rewarding. Um, you know, and it's, there's fun ways you can find ways to save money. Like just don't drink one or two cups of coffee a week, you know, don't buy that coffee. And then that, I mean, I had to quit coffee for health reasons, but which I'm still sad about, but that money could then be contributed over and used for something else, which is your company. So I hope that answers that question. Yeah, you did. It helps a lot because you're right. A lot of people, they just jump right in and they, they kind of regretted it, right? But then if you have a plan in place and you mentally prepare for it, then when the transition comes, it's easier to move into this new space a little bit better. Yeah, yeah. I, I love that. So let's talk about our favorite book, Breaking the Habit of Being Yourself by Joe Dispenza. Um, I love his work. Um, I know that a lot of audience probably have listened to his podcast or have read his books. Um, so Jenny, if you will, uh, I would love to hear from your perspectives. How do you help your clients eliminate their negative beliefs? And I know Joe talks about that in the book, right? Which is like, how do you rewire your brain? And how do you make sure that you are always feeling good? And if you don't feel good, it's fine. But then how do you bring it back on track, right? So it's all about the thought and your feelings, which is, you know, bring you to the new state of being. Um, it's funny. I actually just did a 15 minute, 15 minute meditation of his from YouTube this morning <laughs> when I woke up early this morning. 
Um, they're wonderful. And some of them are longer meditations. But yeah, anyone that has not heard of him should look into him. He's such a fascinating human. And his story, I mean, you read his story about the bike accident and spine injury and didn't have to go through surgery. Like the power of the mind is absolutely incredible. And you think about it, if you take it to the lowest scale, you're putting it down to when you say you watch uh, a scary movie and you're, or even as you think of a scary time in your life, like, oh my gosh, I was, I can remember when I was in that car accident and you can feel the emotions come up. That's how you were not even at the accident. You're right here on your couch thinking about it and your emotions are react, your body's reacting. And that's really what his, the, the really basic part of some of what he talks about is the power of your mind is absolutely incredible. And he talks, you know, he talks about the, the brain waves and what meditation actually can do physically to the mind. It's absolutely, he's, he's basically taken those woo woo, you know, thoughts about meditation, you know, in the seventies, remember the hippies, but it all would be about meditation and doing things like that. But he brings it to the science. He actually can show you what it's doing to your brain and your, your physical body, which is just fascinating. Um, when it comes to my clients, it once again comes down to the individual because some people are going to be like, whoa, lady, if I talked about some of that stuff, they'd be like, I don't know what you're talking about. And a lot of them aren't ready for meditation. But at the same time, some are okay with moments of silence or getting out in nature, just no phone, no nothing. Listen to the birds, you know, just calm your nervous system down. Some of them are okay. They're more on the religious side, want to do prayer moments of prayer and things like that. So it does depend on the client, but as far as helping them see the gremlin in their head and how to change that and those negative thoughts and that he calls about the loop, the negative thought loop, right? Man, I have been there. I, and I suffered, I also talk about it in my story on my website, but I suffered from massive anxiety, very scary moments of panic attacks in my life. Um, luckily, I've been able to break that loop and I can see when it's coming. Like I can see when the gremlin's starting to talk so loud that it's actually taking a physical effect of my body. So when I, when I work with clients, it really depends. I've had some that have had extreme anxiety and it's, it's really getting them to notice that it's there or when it's creeping in. And unfortunately for some, it's a constant thing. They don't know what anything less would feel like. So it can take a lot of work, but what ends up happening, like I talked about earlier is those tough questions. It's those open-ended questions that actually get the client to talk um, and actually you know, speak about what they're feeling and what they're thinking so that they can verbally hear themselves, hear themselves instead of having it swirl just silently in their head, you know, within their own mind, they're verbalizing it. And sometimes I repeat it back to them and they go, oh my gosh, was I honestly saying, did I just say that? And they realize it's just that, that mere reflection back to them, gets them to realize. And then it sparks like, okay, what can I do now to change that? So that doesn't happen anymore. Like I didn't even realize I was doing it. Um, and so that they can change that thought loop and come up with ways. And honestly, when it comes to mental health is so important, it affects every being, every part of your being. Um, and it's honestly, sometimes depending on the person can be one of the toughest things to get past. And so, you know, it's really depends on where they are in their life on a spiritual or mental health level. Um, some people just need to hear that and just ref take a moment to reflect. Like I just had an aha moment, even, and sometimes it's just tiny little changes that they have to make, but getting them to recognize when that gremlin in their head is loud and what that gremlin's really saying is it's not always easy for a coach, but to get that out, it some clients, it literally can be a six month program and you could be in month five and it finally clicks, right? It, or it finally comes up. And sometimes it just doesn't, but I mean, it doesn't to like a huge scale. There's like little bits that they start to kind of 
um, along the way, they start to recognize. And it just needs that one. Sometimes, you know, if you've ever had those situations, like you just need to talk it out with a friend. You need to like, I have not going through this. I just need somebody to hear me, to listen. And that's what a coach does too. And that, you know, even psychologists and those as well, they're, it, you God gave, I always say God gave you one mouth and two ears for a reason. I heard this before. It's you, li- you listen twice as much as you speak. And so that's really just having somebody hear them. And then coaches are good at reflecting like the, so you're saying, and then you repeat what they said. And that actually can help them realize that they're in that thought pattern. And then you come to a, you work with them. Like, what would you like to do differently so that you can catch that before it happens? Mm -hmm. Um, So that, I mean, it's, it sounds, it's really hard to explain. And then, like I said, it's also very different based on the individual, but honestly, a lot of health changes or a lot of health restrictions we give ourselves can come from that thought, like the thought loop gets us kind of like a broken record. And it's like, once you put the record back together or get it to fix, then you can, it feels like you can move forward, you know? Uh, And I'm sure you've had similar situations like that too, as you were making your health changes, it it can get scary. And that grandma would go, are you sure you're ready? Are you sure? You sure you want to do this? (laughs) You know what I mean? No, you can't do this. It's too hard. You know what I mean? That's the voices people hear. And you're like, well, wait a second. Is it though? You know, you're the one, you're actually the one in control. Um, you got to tell the gremlin to zip it. <laughs> right. And it's so easy to fall back to the old patterns. Right? Mm-hmm. That's what Joe Dispenza said, the cycle of thinking and feeling, actually. So it's so important because, first of all, like you said, you have to have awareness. Of, and then you have to take like baby steps and talking to the coach and get the right insights, right? Well, I know you do a lot of coaching with a group of employees. I think that is really powerful too. And, you know, me working in corporate America, a lot of my listeners, they also work in corporate America. So I know mental health is a big topic right now and um especially with covid and post covid and how do we raise the awareness of bringing in this new health approach to corporate america so that more employees can see the benefits of wow i don't have to stick with my old way of thinking i think that was me for so long every single day like i mean i can be honest with you and with my audience i got up right and i didn't do meditation. I didn't know that was meditation available in my fingertips at that time. And I just like immediately get ready. And then like I lock in like, and I'll get like tired. I was like pissed off. I was not in a good mood. And I did that for so long, like almost 10 years. I was like literally every single day. Like I was not in a good mood. And you know, sometimes like my mood swing will get better as time goes by, but I was tired. I was not ready to like tackle the hardest problem that you know, my boss wanted me to do, right? Not first thing in the morning. But so that was my old pattern that I stuck with for so long. But then now, of course, I know there's so many great resources out there, right? I get to talk to you and other like experts in the field. But how do we bring this awareness to corporate America? Because I wish that was available to me five years ago or 10 years ago when I first tapped into this space. Yeah, that's a good question. That one is going to be a little tough one to answer. I think it comes down to the companies, you know, the, those leading the efforts from an employee wellness standpoint. It really does. I mean, I don't, the only other way, so if it, it depends, if they're open and receptive to that and they can figure out a way to incorporate that. Honestly, the one of the easiest ways is just by you sharing. I know that sounds crazy, but, you know, you have an employee wellness group where there's a boatload of employees that are really seeking to have that support, to have the recommendations shared with each other, to give a little inspiration and honestly be cheerleaders to each other, but share it. Like, honestly, that has been some of, when I was doing the employee wellness group, just getting the members to share with each other what they're doing and the the things they're learning. Oh my God, it would be so fun, Emily. You'd sit in in these like lunch and learns and talking about a subject and they'd be like, did you know, did you hear about this book? Did you hear about this podcast? Did you hear about this, you know, YouTube video? And they're like, what, wait, what? I want to hear about that. That just lit them up. And it, it, it's almost like, it's like throwing the match on, you know, or, you know, on lighter food, it just spreads like wildfire. And it, 
you just, you know how it is, like word of mouth. It's that's just how it works. And it's exciting. So if it's exciting to another employee who's sharing it out, that excitement also follows whatever it is you're recommending. And that gets people like, wow, she's that excited about it. I should get excited about it. So really the and this is when I talk about employee wellness, the power of an employee wellness program comes from the employees. It really does. It's them telling the leaders, what is it that I'm looking for? What is it that I need? You know, maybe they don't even know, like maybe it might be so generic, but at the same time, it's telling them, here's what I'm, you know, struggling with and being able to have a way to communicate that up because it does impact their job. Like you, I bet when you were having those struggles where you're just like, go, 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 go in the morning, like you don't, trust me, I did the same thing. Um, you didn't give yourself that moment to just kind of settle into your day. You weren't that productive. You were probably doing 10% of a zillion tasks instead of focusing on one big task and giving it your all, right? Um, and I'm guessing a lot of your listeners listening to this feel this, they, yep, totally do that. Um, so it's, you know, being able to share that up to the leadership actually tells them, hey, this is what I need and I can be a better employee for you if I can have figure out how to incorporate this as I'm working with you. So, you know, can you support us in that regard? But also there's, so it's kind of like that triangle there, the employee um, leaders, the employee wellness leaders are at the top, right? You're funneling it up, but at the bottom is your community, your employee wellness community, like those employee wellness groups. And if somebody is listening to this and has, doesn't have one at work, Go ask. If you're really passionate about health and wellness, ask. Find out how you can make one. Even if you're volunteering, I guarantee there will be other employees that are just as passionate about it as you are. And you can create one, even if it's like a club or whatever. And it will it'll help fill your soul. It'll be so exciting because you're helping and you're sharing and you're community, you're, you're building this community. And it's it actually helps the employees become connected in a way. I mean, there's nothing better than connecting with other people. Nothing is more personal than your health and wellness. Nothing. You're, we're all, and we're all human. No matter if you're a chief in a company, down to whatever level, the lowest lower levels, it's you're all still human. So you're all at the same playing field, right? You might be at different points on the journey, but that is something you can actually still connect the people together, right? Um, so incorporating something like Dr. Joe Dispenza, he's, he's a brilliant man. And it is so fascinating to see the mind body connection work that he has done. I mean, it's fascinating. For many people, it's a lot to initially take in. They're like, wait, what? I just want a, a breathing technique. Can we start with a breathing technique? <laughs> you know what I mean? So uh, it, it might have to I don't know if they can fall in, but there's parts with when it comes to mental health right now, you know, I pay attention to this. People are lonely. There's a lot of, we were, you know, under a pandemic and people were home alone and many are still scared. And I lived through that anxiety of being fearful every single day. And by the grace of God, I don't have, I, I feel like I've the anxiety is no longer there and I can actually learn, I've learned how to cope. So when I went through the pandemic, I didn't get to that level, but I know a lot of people did. So when it comes to health and well, or some mental health, especially in the workplace, honestly, I still go back to the employee wellness group because you can share Dr. Disp Dr. Dispenza's work on a bite-sized piece, like some that one thing that got you, right? And share it at that level. And that's easier to digest than trying to make a whole program. But what ends up happening is, and this is how I coach, it's those little things that just keep stacking up. Mm -hmm. And all of a sudden you're like, oh my gosh, I just did like 20 things and my whole life feels different. And that's what ends up happening. And then when you feel like you got that friend at work and you can say, have you ever heard of so-and-so? Have you ever done this? And that's what those employee wellness groups do. And it's, it's like wildfire. It's fascinating and fun. And as long as there's support from high up down in that triangle, it only makes the, the environment at work that much more engaging and fulfilling for both top level, bottom, everyone in between. Um, and, you know, and, and there's, there's stuff that the company is paying millions, sometimes millions of dollars 
to implement from an employee wellness standpoint, you have advocates at the very bottom in this group that want to share that with everyone else too. So it's like you have an open audience when you have that too. It's, um, but when it, with regards to the mental health, that is honestly, I'm guaranteeing there's a lot of companies and people that are listening to this that have companies that this is their number one priority right now. And you can be part of it. Take You can take action yourself just sharing what you're learning, especially if you've had trouble. Use the resources the company gives too if you're mentally in trouble. You have to use those and... Um, you're never alone. And that's the coolest thing with some of these companies. They're really trying to make sure that their employees know that they're not alone and there's resources that they want you to use. Yeah. Thank you so much for sharing, Jenny, because, yeah, this is a very, very important topic for not only the employers, but, you know, of course, the employees. And I know there's a lot of employers spending a tons of money and time and energy to make sure that they can prioritize and build the best products out there to support their employees. So yeah, if those companies out there, please reach out to Jenny. She has tons of insights and she can definitely share a lot with you guys. And where can people find you on social media? So right now, website librahealthcoach.com is the primary way to find me. Um, it's not social media, but that is a website. Um, and I'm on Facebook. So I have a Facebook uh, page and actually to mounted here. I'm actually creating, I, I loved the employee wellness group work that I did. Now I'm out in the world. So I'm going to create Libra health coaching community. So um, it's called recalibrate yourself. And the word Libra is within the world word recalibrate. So uh, I, I give props to my friend Sue who helped me come up with the name. So, uh, so that's coming out into in Facebook. So it'll be actually linked to my page. Um, and anyone can join. That's literally within the next probably 24 to 48 hours that will be coming out. So, and I'll be also having that posted on my fa or my actual website too. So I want to try to start building the community one so that people have each other to support. They have me to ask some of the questions. So it's kind of fun. I can ask questions. I can share things that I do in my own personal life or, you know, just words of wisdom from other leaders. I can, you know, and, and talk to each other and support each other no matter where you are on your health journey jump in have you know and i'm big about fun like wellness changes you know people are like oh if i hear the word diet you know you're just like Ugh. you know and i'm like <laughs> you know what i mean that's like the in the mind they're like oh i don't want to make changes it's not fun it feels like deprivation well no i think i'm going to change that i think you can have a lot of fun making changes and discovering new foods and new exercises or new ways of exercise, which means hang out with your kids and kick a ball. Like, you know what I mean? It's having fun when you're making these changes and with each other too. Like we need more of that in our lives right now. Well, it's all about taking that baby steps and sharing and connecting with the right people. And I am on the right track now. Yeah. So I, I love that. It's just like that little tiny thing that you do on a daily basis that get you there. So right. Oh, thanks, Jenny. And yeah, last question. What impact would you want to make on the world? <laughs> <laughs> Woo, that's, a, that's a good one. Um, so my biggest, I mean, like I kind of alluded to, like I've always had this innate calling in me that I was supposed to serve. I came into this life to serve others. And it's always kind of like, you know how you have that, just that innate voice in you that just over your life, you can... You, I don't know. It's like it draws you in. And I, and so I'm like, when Libra came in, I'm like, came into my life. I'm like, unexpectedly, too, I knew that that was the way I want to serve. So on an individual basis, if I can impact one life, I am, I am good. And I know I've impacted people. People have come up to me and I'm like, that just makes my life, honestly, just to even the smallest change of like getting your teenage daughter to drink a smoothie. And they're like, hey, it has spinach in it. And they're like, she didn't even know. <laughs> those kind of those little things to the point, like complete overhaul in someone's health. So on an individual level, that is really what I want to get at. And it, it also happens in that being able to take that to the next level and give people a community where they feel safe to share and to be themselves and to learn and have those people in your corner. So that group coaching that I'm going to program that I'm building, as well as the community on Facebook. And then finally hitting the masses and helping small to mid-sized businesses create employee wellness programs that actually 
that employees want and they're a part of and they have a say in it um, that don't have to be costly and complicated. You know, I think sometimes they think it has to be expensive and it has to be complicated, but Mm -hmm. just know that from an employee wellness, the people are where the power is when it comes to health and wellness. So that's where I'm hoping I can give my experience and my personal experience, my employee wellness experience and my, you know, my coaching experience to others so that they can actually live a really fulfilled life. Oh, that's beautifully said. Thank you so much, Jenny. And I'll definitely link your website and the Facebook page down below so people can check it out and come to you for more questions. Um, But yeah, this has been a real joy. Thank you so much. And dream big and make things happen. I'll see you next week. Thanks, Jenny. Thank you.